Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so, a little bit of an embarrassing omission here. I actually recorded a ton of episodes of Mass Effect last night, about four hours worth of content. I think it ended up being seven episodes. Um, and the idea was that I would get up this morning and edit those episodes. Well, I went to go get the audio file for all of my commentary, and it's just gone. Um, so I don't have any way to recover it. It is just completely gone. So what I have to do now, um, because I also saved the game, so it's not like I can replay those episodes and, and just do the randomizer again. Um, I'm going to watch my four hour video, provide commentary, and then put that over. Um, you are going to see in this corner... For the next seven episodes, there's going to be me down there, but nothing's going to be matching up. I have no way to remove the face cam with the way that I record, um, so that's just going to be there the whole time, and so I apologize for that, and I apologize for what these next seven episodes are going to be like, but I really don't have another way around it unless I just want to like end the series, which we obviously don't want to do. Um, so for the next seven episodes just be prepared for my commentary to be me watching um me playing the game instead of what i was actually saying during the game so uh, i apologize for that but if you're okay with it let's get into it <laughs> Welcome aboard, Normie. Welcome to another episode of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition with Randomized Decisions. If you're excited for today's episode, make sure you hit that like button down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, and you guys are getting to see right now a little bit of a weird thing. It's me getting ready for the episode. Uh, down in the corner there. You guys usually don't get to see this stuff because I cut it out. So, um, again, I want to apologize for what we have to deal with with this upcoming few episodes of Mass Effect. Uh, but if it makes Amen. you feel any better, I've got to deal with it right now, watching myself with no idea what to say about it. So, <laughs> okay, I think we're um, heading around the Normandy right now to talk to people. I don't think Adams has anything to say. Yeah, we're checking the menu to see where everybody is. Don't you dare. Everywhere. I honestly, I recorded so many episodes in this recording session, I don't remember what I did in the first episode, so... I love you, but I know you. Don't wake me at Well, I'll let this kind of play. Commander. Sorry. Didn't see you there. This is a recording from Ferris Fields. Months ago. I lost a lot of friends that day. I lost my husband. I grieved. Said goodbye, made my peace. You were talking to him when the collectors hit? I was organizing construction at a remote station a few clicks south of the main colony. Robert managed to get outside of the field the collectors put up. Instead of running, he called me. I'm sorry for your loss. He obviously cared a lot about you. He was afraid I wouldn't let go. But for him, I moved on. Or at least I thought I had. Then the invasion hits, there's no time. And the one thing I grab is this. I mean, what's the point of moving on with your life when everything is going to hell? Start thinking that way, and we've already lost. Yeah, you're right, but... Well, to be honest... I've never felt as alone as I do right now. We all die alone. In the end, you're defined by what you've done. Yeah, you're right. But don't worry, Commander. When I'm in that pilot seat, I'm there 100%. I won't fail you. It's just the downtime between missions that's hard, you know? You can handle it. Hey again. What's up? 
forgot to mention that you mentioned the mission you had against the collector. You can't hear what happened. What the randomizer is what I said. for me, but I, I swear to you guys that I, was I am to doing the randomizer. You, you can want the rest of the story? You're gonna have to get me so. really drunk, or or what? That's about it. Sorry, Commander. Just not interested in talking about that. Next topic. You had a hard time leaving Earth. You still want to head back? Hell yeah. But I get it now. It's not where I'd be most useful. Not yet, anyway. We'll get back there. I know. And I'll do whatever it takes to get us there, Commander. Maybe no more shuttle crashes. No promises now that I've gotten the taste for it. Besides, I like to keep Esteban on his toes. You got family back on Earth? Yeah, an uncle. Retired military. Got a few cousins I haven't heard from in a while. You and your uncle close? Yep. He was the reason I joined the Marines. and was about the only good thing in my life after my mom died. No dad? He's there. Somewhere. But I'm not sure I'd call him family. Not anymore. I would like to find out how my uncle's doing, though. What's with you and the nicknames? It's just my way of remembering people. Some people just don't match their names, you know? So, I just give them a new one. So, I'm a loco, huh? Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty crazy. But the shit you've done? <laughs> makes me look sane. I take it you and Lieutenant Cortez know each other. Yeah, Esteban did a stint on Fell Prime where me and my squad were stationed. I caught up with him on Earth a few months back. He's a good guy. Just don't tell him I said so. It'd go to his head. I'll talk to you later. You bet. So yeah, definitely, um... A lot of character development at the beginning of this episode, just talking to people on our crew. Uh, going to the third deck here, probably talk to Liara. All good here, Commander. And old Dr. Michelle is up here too. I don't think she says anything though, if I remember correctly. Dr. Tassoni found useful information in the data you recovered, good. Commander. All good. <laughs> This is where we upgrade things randomly. I can't even remember what I get. I think I get the weapon damage here. Yep, weapon damage, and then this one. I'm pretty sure it's the power cooldown. Hello yeah, again, Shepard. How much do you know about this Prothean artifact? Very little. Yep. We're fortunate enough data survived to piece together the blueprints. Yeah, to Decoding them will require as many specialists as we can find. It's that high tech? I'd have killed for a glimpse of it during graduate school. So is that drone your new secretary? Glyph is a VI shell that indexes my search functions on the data feeds. I couldn't work without it. Although I'm lucky Edie let Glyph on board after it tried to rewrite her scheduled tasks. I was merely attempting to standardize the ship's automated systems to our own, Dr. Tassoni. Yes, that's precisely why you're confined to the cabin. What's been happening with you as the broker, Liara? It's been... exciting. The old broker's ship? Impressive, but it was never meant to be space-worthy. Which meant the elusive man eventually tracked me down on Hagalaz. What happened? I knew he was coming. Ferran and I loaded as much of the ship's specialized hardware onto a shuttle as we could. We got away from Cerberus's ships after arranging an appropriate distraction. What kind of distraction? Sending the broker's ship exploding into a Cerberus cruiser. I don't think the elusive man expected me to give up my resources in such a spectacular fashion. Can you still operate as the broker without the ship? Well, I couldn't let the elusive man have it. I saved what was crucial. My network of agents is intact, although the Reapers have taken a toll on their numbers. It's taking a while to re-establish contact. So where is Farron if you two escaped? He convinced me he was recovered enough to work, and I do need more agents. Agent Farron didn't report any injuries during his last call to you, Doctor. True. Given what he survived, I should probably worry less. What have you been up to since we last saw each other? Since you helped me defeat the Shadow Broker, I started looking for defenses against the Reapers. The Protheans were the only ones with substantial information on them. 
The older civilizations barely had records. I knew the elusive man was hunting for the same thing when our agents began crossing paths. Like on Mars? I thought I'd covered my tracks, but he had surveillance there all along. We'll talk later, Liara. Of course. Okay, um... I don't know. Well, I think we'd be able to talk to Joker and stuff, but we're kind of running out of people to talk to at this point. Those poor colonists are and I can't prime. remember what we actually do in this attack. episode. Now Cerberus. About ten minutes in at this point, worth, and we just talk to people. doesn't need so. a translator himself, but he shared a Prothean language tutorial program. It was apparently designed for servant races being inducted into the Empire. Charming cultural clue. about emails. I'm actually going to have to read these things again out loud for you guys. That's going to be fun. So a Prothean? A real live Prothean? Up here. We are stopping bouncing Joker. Yet. I'm guessing they're he made a comment about how he's all up here by himself. It's kind of lovely. <laughs> so let's find out what I actually did this episode, because I certainly don't remember. Maybe I went back to the Citadel? I know I spent a lot of time on the Citadel in this recording session. Spoiler alert, by the way. Okay. Oh no, we gotta rescue the Primarch. Or... Oh, what am I doing? Oh uh, yeah, this stuff. I yeah, um, think I do go back to the Citadel, but I realize it's a waste of time. It's a little bit different to recording commentary when you're actually playing it as the one you're just like watching a video. We are transferring your docking clearance Definitely to an alliance you a, um, a different feel Figures. to it. Finally back in action, the alliance already wants us tagged and collared. Just our way of welcoming you back, flight lieutenant. Uh, yes ma'am, requesting docking permission? Docking permission granted. Would you like private transport arranged? I'll handle it. Yes, commander. Okay, so yeah, we go to the Citadel, and I think we just go to one place, realize that it's a complete waste of time, and then leave. <laughs> well, Riveting Commander. content at this point, I'm sorry guys. Now arriving I'm gonna be able to comment about how bad of a shot I am and everything like that. That's gonna be fun, because now I can actually pay attention to how horrible I am at this game. <sighs> Excuse me, it's also very, very early in the morning. I woke up like, hey, I'm awake, I might as well edit these episodes real quick, and then... Yeah, nope. One moment, please. <laughs> and now I already gave up. <laughs> at docking bay D24. Back to Normandy. And now I go to Palavin to rescue the Primarch, so... I think my um, 
microphone is slightly picking up on my headphones right now. Not much of a selection here. I just do throw and I think I increase force damage. Decimated. Strongest military in the galaxy, and the Reapers are obliterating it. Was it like this on Earth? Yes. Shepard, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Commander, the LZ is getting swarmed. James, open that hatch. here for a little while looking for different items because there is stuff to pick up. Uh, knowledge of terrain is our only advantage here and that's not going to last forever if they keep throwing their forces at us. We'll hold this area as long as we can. I'm linking my transform to fit the life signal monitoring system in unit suits. If it goes out, send another unit to your ASAP. Oh, I didn't give myself much time to read that, did I? Not even static. Try them again. Respectfully, sir. They sent us winter gear, not sure what they thought they'd do with that kind of gear here, but I suppose we should take the spirits, thank the spirits nonetheless, the power sources can be cannibalized and converted to power our comic gear filtering units instead at least. It's nice not to have to block them up any attack begin this time. Have the crew make only critical level eight repair. Every serviceable fighter is in the air. Yes, sir. Tabestic, get your men up on that north barricade. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it's time to Sergeant actually talk Bartis, to them. Find a way to get that comm tower operational. Sir. General. Commander Shepard. Heard you were coming, but I didn't believe it. General Corinthus. I've come to get Primarch Fedori. Primarch Fedorian is dead. 
His shuttle was shot down an hour ago as it tried to leave Drive the moon. Pause. That's gonna complicate things. How bad is it, General? We just lost about 400 men in half an hour. We set up camps on this moon as an advanced position to flank the enemy. A sound strategy, just... Irrelevant. Exactly. The sheer force of the Reapers seems to make them immune to that sort of tactic. The Primarch and his men found that out the hard way. I'm sorry. That's a big loss for everyone. Reaper bastards. So what happens now? The Turian hierarchy provides very clear lines of succession. Right. General Corinthus? With such heavy casualties, it's hard for me to be certain who the next Primarch is. Palavan Command will know. However, at the moment, contacting them is impossible. The comm tower is out. Husks are swarming that area. We can't get close enough to repair it. Well, I'm not leaving this moon until I know where the new Primarch is. I'll fix your tower. Thank you, Commander. I'll take care of things on this end. All right, let's go. I see the comm tower. To the left of the main barricade in front of Palavis. Let's go! We'll get Garrus on your team, so... That's a little upsetting. Game. 
I have news. I'm listening. After sifting through people who are dead or MIA, Palavin Command tells me the new Primarch is General Adrian Victus. Victus? His name's crossed my desk. He's currently on this moon, on the front lines. We're attempting to contact him. However, you may not be happy. He has a reputation for being a maverick, for playing loose with accepted strategy. What do you mean? On Tetris, during the uprisings, his squad discovered a Solarian spy ring about the same time the Turian Separatists did. Rather than neutralize the ring, he fell back. He even gave up valuable fortifications which the Rebels took. Then the Rebels attacked the Solarians, and when both groups had worn each other down, Victus moved back in, didn't lose a man. Bold strategy, but wild behavior doesn't get you advanced up the meritocracy. I need Turian support to have any hope of taking back Earth. Is this guy gonna mess things up for me? If you're asking for my professional opinion, I'd say I don't know. But I'm wary. Can I ask for someone else? Of course not. I'll make it work. General, sir, I still can't raise him. Let me have a look. Yes, sir. Commander! Shepard, come in! Can this wait, Joker? We're in the middle of a war zone. We've got a situation on the Normandy, Commander. It's like she's possessed. Shutting down systems, powering up weapons. I can't find the source. Hang tight, Joke. I'll be back as soon as I can. Incoming Harvester! <laughs> General, tell Primarch Victus will rendezvous here. Come on, let's go hit this bad boy. I'll radio you as soon as I've contacted our new Primarch. Right, let's go. Okay, yeah, that would normally be where Gary shows up and Liara goes back to the ship and... Um, yeah. um, and then it's Eugene and Gary's, but so hard. this time it's... Atmosphere's a little thinner than I'm used James to. James and Liara. Adrenaline's better than oxygen in space. Oh, here we go. Except that the Reapers look like Turians! Right. Me too. How are the Reapers doing? Oh, yeah.
Yeah, like fish in a barrel. What? Old humans say, like fish More in the horizon. a barrel. on the Primarch. Still can't get a stable comm link. Okay, I'm going on foot. Head toward the planet. Got it. Shepard out. Let's go find our Primarch. And I do believe, yep, that's where I end the episode, guys. So if you did enjoy, make sure you hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And other than that, guys, I hope you have a good one, and I will see you next time. Peace! Peace.